Hey, it's Ryan at Prisma here. By far one of the most requested features that we get is support for MongoDB. You can see in this issue here, going back to January of 2020, there's lots of activity, lots of people give a thumbs up for support for MongoDB. And we're happy to say that we do have support for MongoDB in early access. It's a preview feature, it's early access, but if you want to go ahead and try it out, you certainly can at this point. And in this video, I'd like to show how you can use MongoDB in your Prisma project. I'm going to be using MongoDB Atlas to connect to, so I'm going to have a remote database in this example. You can use MongoDB locally, or you can use something like Atlas as well. So over in a Node.js project, a TypeScript Node.js project, we can get everything situated to give us access to MongoDB. Let's make sure we've got all of the dependencies installed. We'll npm install dev Prisma to get the Prisma CLI, so that's a dev dependency. Once we get that, we can npm install at Prisma slash client to make sure we get the Prisma client. And once we've got those two things in place, we can start to work with Prisma. So it's just like we typically would do with a relational database. We can do npx Prisma init to get initialized with Prisma. And that over in the table of contents here is going to give us a Prisma directory with a schema.prisma file. This is the starting point that you get when you initialize Prisma. You get Postgres by default, but you can go ahead and say you want access to MongoDB. So the provider will be MongoDB. And then in the client, you're going to need to opt in to support for MongoDB as a preview feature. So preview features, you'll say that you want MongoDB DB. So things are set up now with Prisma to give us access to MongoDB, and we can start to go ahead and model out some data. So let's make something that deals with blog posts, just for a quick and easy example. Let's have a model called post. And this is much like we would see with a relational database. We'll have our models, which equal to tables in a relational database. But with MongoDB, our models are going to point to collections. So the starting point that we usually go for is to say that we want an ID. It's going to be of type string because Mongo gives us strings for IDs. And we'll say that this is the primary key for this model. Then we'll want to say the default value is going to be DB generated. So the database is going to generate our IDs for us. And this is where it gets a little bit different. We have to do a few extra things than we would see in a relational database. We actually have to map this field. We use the map decorator to say that we want to map to something specific in the post collection. And that's something specific is underscore ID. And that's because underscore ID is the default that Mongo gives us for our IDs. So we map to underscore ID. And the very last thing that we need to do here is we need to use a native database type and say that we want this to be an object ID specifically. So a little bit of a long line here in the uh, first, first line for our post model, but this is what we need to get our IDs in place. After this point, it's just a matter of putting in the properties that we want, things like a title, which will be a type string, and a body of type string as well. So there's our first model. We've got things situated now for that. And at this point, if you were using a relational database, you would go ahead and migrate or do Prisma DB push if you were in development. But it's a bit different with Mongo. With Mongo, because we're dealing with an unstructured database that doesn't take migrations, what we do instead is we just generate the Prisma client. So for that, we do npx Prisma generate. This will give us our Prisma client. It's what gives us our type safe database access. So we can hop over to server.ts and we can start working with this. So over in server.ts, let's bring in the Prisma client. So we'll import Prisma client from at Prisma slash clients. And then we can get an instance of Prisma, const Prisma equals a new Prisma client. Then within our main function here, we can write some code to create a record. We can say const post equals await prisma.post. So there's our post model that we get on our Prisma client. We get type safe access to it post.create. That's the method that we want to call. And just like if we were working with relational databases, we can say we want a data key to go in here. And then we describe what we want to go into this record. So data will take title. So we'll say my first post and it will also need body. 
my first post body. So even though we're working with MongoDB, which is inherently unstructured, we have some structure for access to our database. So we can't go ahead and at this point put in something like author because author is not a key that's recognized through Prisma client. So we do get some protection this way. So after that goes, let's console.log post. And then we'll just make sure we're good down here. Looks like we will be good. We can do npm run dev. Once we do that, we are going to get access to this post that was created. There's our MongoDB ID. So at this point, we can go over to MongoDB Atlas and we can click into our collections and we can make sure things are there. We've got our first database created for us on the fly. We've got our, our post collection created for us on the fly. And the first document is there, the one that we just created. So we have got access to MongoDB through Prisma client. Everything is set up for that. What I'd like to take a look at now is how we might deal with and how we might think about relating data between two different models or two different collections. So in a relational database, it's very common to have many different models and then set up relations between them. We can do the same thing here with MongoDB, but it's up to you as the developer and the database architect to think about whether or not you actually want to relate different collections between one another. And the reason for that is MongoDB really shines when you denormalize your data and when you repeat different data in multiple different locations. In doing so, you won't necessarily want collections to be related to one another because then you have to populate all of those collections together. Things can start to get a little bit hairy, especially when you do that to a great extent and it can really slow things down. It's definitely the case that MongoDB isn't really meant to be used like a relational database. And so that's something to keep in mind. But if you do want to go ahead and do that, here's how you would do it. You'd come down and say that you want a model called author, for example, and you're going to want want the exact same kind of ID setup. So you can just copy that down. And then you can just say name perhaps can be a string for the author. And at this point, what we'll want to do is set up that relation. So we'll say that an author is going to have many posts. So we can say, give us a key called posts, and that's going to equal a post array. If we go ahead and save this now, we get some auto completion done for us. And what we'll have to do is we can change up this to be a lowercase a on author. We'll remove the question marks here to say that this will be a required field in this case. And the reason that we're still getting a red squiggly is that we haven't set up the type correctly here for author ID. What we have to do is say db.objectID should be its type. Once we do that, we're good to go. We don't have any more errors here. So again, nothing to migrate here, but what we do have to do is generate the Prisma client. For that, we can do npx Prisma generate. Now with the Prisma client generated again, we can head back over to server.ts and we can start to work with our new collection. So at this point, we're already seeing that we're getting a typing error if we try to go ahead and just use this same create call that we did before. And that's because now we're dealing with the author key, which is a required key in this case. So what I want to do at this point is I actually want to go ahead and create an author first. We'll do const author equals await Prisma author create, we'll pass in the data key, and we'll say that name is just going to be my name in this case. We'll log out that author, make sure that we get it back as we create. We can save that and we can do npm run dev to run this. There's the author record with the Mongo ID and we can make sure that we get it here if we refresh. Once we do, here is the author collection with that single document. So we're good to go there. I'm actually going to go ahead and I will delete this whole collection in fact, because we just have a single document right now. I'll create this post, I'll, I'll delete this post collection, I'll drop that. And what we'll do now is we will create a, another post relating it to author. So we can just back ourselves up here actually to the point at which we had post. So there we go. Now, data is has got the red squiggly. What we want to do is put a author as a key here. So author, and we want to connect by ID to the author ID that we've got right here. So let's put this in place 
and we can save this. And once we do, we should get a record created. We did in fact get one created. We can verify that over here to make sure that things are good to go. Once we get our post collection here, we can see that the document that we've got here has an author ID key pointing to an object ID of the author that we've got. So what can we do with this? Well, we can start to bring this data out in queries. So for example, let's come up here and do just a call for many posts. So const post equals await prisma.post.find many. Let's take a look at what we get with this first. I will just put an S at the end of that. And what we get is our single post with an author ID. So what we can do now is instead of just get the author ID, we can go ahead and populate this out. And so that's what we're going to do next. What we'll do is we'll say find many with include author true. And when we do that, what we're going to get is We've got things restarted down here. We've got author with the author ID, but also the name. So we've gone ahead and we've populated between two collections in this case, just like we would do with a relational database. So again, it is perhaps the case that instead of doing this, instead of relating collections between one another, you might just want to store the author information in the post collection itself. You'll have to repeat the author information. You'll have to say that an author, if they have 10 posts, let's say, you'll have to repeat their information in each of those posts, but that's sort of the way that MongoDB was designed to be used anyway. So it's up to you how you use it, but please just be aware that there are considerations to make when you are going to relate collections between one another. So that's about it to show at this point for MongoDB Early Access. If you've got any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments below, or you can hit us up on Twitter. It's twitter.com slash prisma. Thanks for watching.